In SwiftUI, the simplest form of animation is an implicit one. We tell a viewer ahead of time, if someone wants to animate you, here's how you should respond. Then SwiftUI will then take care of making sure any changes that do happen follow the animation we requested. In practice, I think this makes animation trivial. It really could not be any easier. Let's try an example. We're going to make a simple red button with 50 points of padding all around it. No action code inside, but with a circular clip shape. We can say there is a button with a text tap me. Do nothing inside. With padding of 50. Background of dot red. Uh, foreground of dot white. And then clip shape of circle. Now, what we want is every time this button is tapped, it should get bigger and bigger and bigger. And we can do that with a new modifier called scale effect. We provide this with a value from zero upwards, and it'd be drawn at that size where a value of one is equal to 100%, so it's natural size. Now, because we want this to scale effect the change whenever the button's tapped, we've got to use an at state property, and we'll store a double so we can modify it freely with decimal values and so forth. So we'll say at state private var animation amount is 1.0. And I will add that to our button by saying dot scale effect. And we'll apply animation amount inside there. Finally, when the button's tapped, we want to increase animation amount by some value like one or two, whatever. So we'll say in here animation amount plus equals one. Now I'll go ahead and run that code now so you can see what it does right now with that current code. As our button, and I press it, it just jumps up immediately to the new size. There is no animation here, it just scales up immediately. Now you can see as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it isn't getting redrawn at the higher resolution, so the button looks a bit sort of mangy right now, a bit blurry, but that's okay. Now, the human eye is highly sensitive to movement. We're extremely good, presumably for historical uh, lion-eating reasons, um, at spotting when things are moving. You know, killer predator in the long grass coming for us. We're good at seeing that kind of thing. Same for when they change appearance. Something's changed, we recognize it straight away. And this is what makes animation both so important and so pleasing for us. And so we can ask SwiftUI to create an implicit animation for this button so that all the changes we're making, all the scaling happening, will be done smoothly rather than just jumping up each time. So we're going to add an animation modifier below scale effect by saying dot animation dot default value animation amount. Oops, animation amount even. There we go. And this asks SwiftUI to apply a default animation to that view whenever the value of animation amount changes. And immediately, we're going to see meaningful animation. I'll press the button now. And there we go, it just slides up like that. Beautiful. So this animation here, this implicit animation here, is taking effect on all the properties of the view that change. Right? It understands scale effect might change, other things might change, but we can attach more modifiers bound to animation amount and have them change too. For example, we could add a, a, a second new modifier to the button called blur. And blur applies a Gaussian blur with a special radius of our choosing. So we'll say uh, before animation, after scale effect, dot blur radius of, and I'm going to say, animation amount, well, animation amount even, minus one times three. So this is intentional. Um, our animation amount starts at one. And so we subtract one from it by default. So there's no blur by default. So one minus one is zero times three is still zero. So there's no blur by default. But when animation becomes two, we'll do two minus one to make one and multiply it by three to get a three point radius and so forth, or six, nine and, and beyond. 
So let's go ahead and run it, the code again and see how it looks. We should have been well C. There we go. It is getting increasingly blurry and uh, big as it grows higher and higher and higher. Now the point of this is that nowhere have we had to say what every frame of our animation looks like, and we haven't even really said when SwiftUI should start and finish the animation. Instead, our animation becomes a function of our state, just like the views themselves.